This is part one of our lesson on exponential functions. So we're going to start out by taking a look at what an exponential function looks like and picking out some of the key features. So here it says, for the graph below, state the following information. And this is a graph of an exponential function. You'll notice that it doesn't look like a quadratic. A quadratic makes a parabola that has two sides. This looks like a parabola that got a little lazy on one of the sides. So we're going to try to identify the x-intercept, the y-intercept, the horizontal asymptote, that's me for us, whether it's increasing or decreasing, the domain, and the range. So we're going to start with the y-intercept. The y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. The y-axis is the one that goes up and down. It's vertical. And I want to look for the point where my graph crosses the y-axis. And it crosses the y-axis right there at y equals negative 3. So I can either write y equals negative 3, or we could write it as an actual coordinate. This would have an x value of 0, so this would be the point 0 and negative 3. The x-intercept is where the graph crosses the x-axis, which is the horizontal one here. So to find the x-intercept, we want to look at where does the graph cross the x-axis, which is that point right there, at x equals 2. So I can either write x equals 2, or I can say that this is the point 2 and 0 because the y value would be 0. Now the horizontal asymptote is something that is new for us. A horizontal asymptote is a horizontal line that your curve is going to approach or get really close to but not cross. So it's going to look on your graph like a place where your graph is leveling off. And I notice that down here at negative 4, my graph seems to be lower, sorry, leveling off at negative 4. It doesn't go any lower than negative 4, um, at least not as much as I can see on my graph. And if we zoomed in, you would see that the graph gets really, really, really close to negative 4, but never actually gets there. Now that's hard to tell from the graph because the line is thick and it's a little hard to see, but it doesn't actually get to negative 4. It'll get really close, so negative 3.99999999999, but it won't actually get to negative 4. So here, I'm going to say that my horizontal asymptote is the line y equals negative 4. I know it's y equals and not x equals because it's passing through the y-axis at negative 4. And I think it would be a good idea if I just wrote down that this is an invisible line that the curve approaches or gets close to but does not cross. Does not cross, does not touch. Now increasing and decreasing is my absolute favorite one to do. Uh, something that is increasing is going to be going up, and we're always going from left to right. So you put your finger or your pencil on the curve, and you follow it, and if it's going up, that's increasing. If it was going down, that would be decreasing. So increasing just is up, decreasing just means down. So I would say that this is definitely increasing. Now the domain and range, we want to look at the set of x values, the set of y values. So domain is the set of x values and the range is the set of y values. So if I look at the domain, we want to look at our lowest possible x value on the graph and our highest possible x value on the graph. Now I notice that my graph appears to stop here at negative 10. Now I didn't print it, but there should be arrows on the end of that graph showing that they do continue on. 
So even though it looks like it ends at negative 10, it actually keeps going. So negative 11, negative 12, all the way to the smallest possible negative number you can have. And the smallest possible number you can have is negative infinity. Now the upper end up here looks like it's at about 4. But it would continue and hit 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 and 9 and just keep going and getting wider and wider and wider as it goes. And it's going to head all the way out to the biggest possible number, which is positive infinity. So I like to write the domain by saying XER to let us know that X is a real number. And then we say that it's all the numbers between negative infinity and positive infinity. And it's all the X values in between, so I put X in the middle. And then I put my greater than and less than signs so that they point at the smallest number. So a negative infinity is smaller than a positive infinity, so I'm going to point it towards negative infinity. Now the equal sign, we could put the equal sign here, although technically you can't ever get to infinity, so I wouldn't put an equal sign there, but you could if you wanted to. Now for the range, we need to do the same thing, but we look at y. So I'm looking at the up and down part. The lowest possible value on my graph is down here at negative 4. And the highest my graph goes, well, it goes to 10, but the graph keeps going up, 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 all the way to the highest point of infinity. So for my y values, they're going to be all the numbers between negative 4 and positive infinity. So I'm going to write yer to say that y is a real number. And then negative 4 is the smallest number. Infinity is my largest number. And y is all the numbers in between negative 4 and infinity. And my greater than and less than signs point towards the smallest number. Negative 4 is the smallest number. So they're going to point towards the negative 4. Now, I don't put the equal sign on infinity because it's not a real number, it's just a concept, you can't really get there. And I'm not going to put an equal sign on the negative 4, because while the curve is going to get really close to negative 4, it never actually gets there. So it's not actually ever going to be equal to negative 4. So I'm just going to say less than and leave it at that. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pause the video for a minute, and I'd like you to stop and fill in the information on the graphs. So identify the x-intercept, the y-intercept, uh, the vertical asymptote, or the horizontal asymptote, and whether it's increasing or decreasing. So this is the point where you should pause the video, try it yourself, and then restart it back up once you've got your answers. So hopefully you paused the video and you tried answering these two. So for the first one, the x-intercept of the graph is negative 1. The y-intercept of the graph is negative 4. The asymptote where it's leveling off is here at negative 5. And it's decreasing because the curve is going down. This one here. The x-intercept was also negative 1. The y-intercept was positive 1. The asymptote this time is at the top of the curve at 2, and it is increasing. So that's it for this part.